Purchasing power parity, the best way to compare money measures across countries. So you have two choices when you want to compare money across countries. One is the exchange rate and the other is purchasing power parity. Let's th talk about the exchange rate method. So we have to convert, to be able to compare uh, money across countries, we have to convert from local currency units to a common currency. Local, local currency units are euros in Europe, yen in Japan, pesos in Mexico, and so on. The commonest currency in the world is the US dollar, and that's what we usually convert to. So the thing to do if you want to use the exchange rate method is to look up the exchange rate for how many US dollars one unit of the local currency will buy. Say one euro will buy a dollar and 36 cents in US dollars. Then you multiply the local currency unit money value by the exchange rate. So let's say you want to buy something that costs 10 euros. Well, um, you need a dollar thirty-six for every euro, and so you just multiply a dollar thirty-six times ten, and then you know you're going to need thirteen dollars and sixty cents to buy something for ten euros in the um, in Europe. Okay, so why don't you try it just to get it comfortable? Say one Mexico one Mexican peso will buy eight cents in U.S. dollars. And GDP in Mexico in 2012 was 15.5 trillion pesos. Okay, so what we want to know is what's that GDP converted to US dollars? So we know that every peso is 8 cents, and so what are you going to do? That's right, you're just going to multiply the 15.5 trillion pesos times 8 cents, or $8.08 .08 per peso. And you can see the way this is set up that the pesos will cancel out and you'll just have dollars. When you uh, put that into your calculator, you should get 1.24 trillion US dollars. And then we can have a comparison. Before that, when it's in pesos, we have no idea what that would be in US dollars. So that's the exchange rate method. Purchasing power parity is a different way to do the conversion. It's better. Because what you do with purchasing power parity is you compare what money can buy across countries rather than just what the money can buy, how many US dollars the money can buy. Okay, so the PPP conversion tells you how much local currency units you need to buy what a US dollar buys in the United States. So let's say a dollar in the United States buys a candy bar what you'd want to know is how many local currency units do you need to buy a candy bar and then you do the conversion that way. Prices tend to be lower in poorer countries because land and labor cost less so the cost of living is lower. And that means that your local currency is probably going to go farther when you use it at home than when you try to buy a dollar and come to the United States. And that's basically what this says. Even though you can't get a lot of dollars for your local currency unit, you can get more than a dollar will buy in the United States. Okay. Um, and since it's what you get for your money that counts, comparing purchasing power is better than comparing money according to the exchange rate. Okay, so here's an example of how this works. Let's see how many pesos and dollars you need to buy two bananas. Okay, so in the United States, you can get two bananas for a dollar. That's pretty close. In Mexico, you can get two bananas for nine pesos. So the banana purchasing power of one US dollar is equivalent to nine pesos. What you're doing is you're looking at the same good in both countries, and you're saying, okay, what does it cost in the United States? What does it cost in my local currency units, say in pesos in Mexico? And then you're going to use the ratio of those for your, for your uh, uh, conversion factor. Okay, so according to this, each peso is worth one ninth, right? Because you, for every a dollar, um, you need nine pesos. And so that would mean that each peso is 11 cents in terms of what it will buy in Mexico. Okay, so do you see what I did? Instead of looking up the exchange rate for what you can buy dollars at, I'm looking at what you need to buy 
the something that you can buy in the United States, you know how many dollars that is, how many pesos does it cost? And then I'm doing the ratio that way. Okay, how does 11 cents compare with the 8 cents the peso is worth under the exchange rate method? Okay, so the exchange rate method suggests that I would need 1 divided by 0.08, so I would need 12.5 pesos to buy two bananas, but it only costs 9 pesos. So it makes the Mexicans seem poorer than they really are. Is that a big difference, the difference between 11 cents and 8 cents? Well, it kind of is. Um, right, because that's about, uh, it's a third um, lower. Okay, so let's look at it in terms of GDP. This is GDP per capita. If I just use the exchange rate method, it looks like average GDP or GDP per capita in Mexico is $9,742. But if I look at it using the exchange rate, or rather the PPP, the purchasing power parity ratio, it's 16,676, so substantially higher. Um, and where, why is that? Well, it's because, or, or what does this mean? It means that if you had the uh, per capita GDP in Mexico, you could buy $16,676 worth of what you would get in the United States in Mexico, and that's really a better figure than the 9,742. So when we think about, okay, how is someone in Mexico doing? The $16,000, that's the conversion we, sh we should think of because we know what $16,000 can get you in the United States. The exchange rate method can also make countries look too rich. So countries that have high prices, like Sweden, they can get their, their uh, I think it's a kroner that they have, they can get a lot of dollars for one unit of, of their local currency, but their local currency doesn't buy as much because prices are higher. So if we use the exchange rate method, it looks like the Swedes are rolling in money. The, the per capita GDP is $55,000 in Sweden. Um, but if we convert to purchasing power parity dollars, they can only buy $43,000 worth of stuff. Okay, so PPP is better. Uh, recall that GDP is the total value of goods and services produced in a country in a year. If you value the goods and services in U.S. dollars, instead of taking the LCU value and using the exchange rate, that's basically what the PPP is doing. So it's looking at the stuff that you have, and then it's putting the U.S. dollar, what you would need to buy that stuff in the United States. Okay, so it's a purchasing power unit. Notice that the, in the examples of Mexico and Sweden that the units are international dollars. An international dollar measures the goods and services that a U.S. dollar can purchase in the U.S. An international dollar in Mexico or Sweden measures the same goods and services. So per capita GDP compares purchasing power across countries. All right, so PPP is better. All right, so when you have the choice, you want to be using the uh, PPP measure. All right, I'm, now I'm repeating myself. Okay, so it tells us the purchasing power of the local currency unit in the country where the currency is used based on local prices. Not what the local currency unit could buy in the United States at U.S. prices. Okay, so it's really a measure of the command of your, the dollar amount in your own country. And that's it.